a model steamboat named Edith. This is part 29, piping the steam plant and other important jobs. In the last episode, I made a special fitting which holds a drain valve to allow me to drain condensate from the condenser. And in this clip, I'm silver soldering a union cone on the other end of the pipe. And to illustrate how easy it is to cremate the part, I'm applying too much heat, but I pulled the heat away just before the part melted. As a general rule, when the heat is sufficient to make the flux take on a watery appearance, that's the time to just touch the part with the silver solder. And the parts being silver soldered do not need to be as hot as this. After quenching in some cold water, I just used the polishing spindle to clean up the assembly. The rest of this part's been in the acid bath overnight, so it's fairly clean to start with. If I sit the condenser on its mountings inside the boat, you will get the general idea of how it's going to mount. Caution, for the meticulous people out there, this next operation is very unengineering like I held the piece in position, put a couple of felt tip pen marks on the deck, and now I'm drilling some holes on the felt tip pen marks. And guess what? Both of the holes in the deck line up perfectly with the holes on the fitting. These matching holes will allow me to bolt the fitting to the deck, but I'm not ready to do that just yet. The drain tap is now in place on the fitting, so I've just silver soldered a union onto the end of a short piece of copper pipe to act as a drain. I can now connect a piece of silicone rubber tubing to this valve to drain the condensate, which has oil in it, into a suitable receptacle for disposal. In this episode, you will see me fitting the superstructure frequently. That's just to make sure that nothing is in the way. I think that this is a really good looking old boat. It really captures the essence of an old fishing boat. What I'm doing in this clip is using a piece of boiler banding to make a strap to hold a piece of quarter inch diameter pipe to the main chimney extension. I'm using a scrap piece of quarter inch pipe just to get the shape right. And now I'm holding the piece of boiler banding against the chimney extension so I can cut the boiler banding to the correct length. You should get the general idea from this clip. I've bent the ends over after drilling holes in the boiler banding, and now I'm fitting a 6BA bolt to hold it all together. And here is a shot of the finished strap. I could have used a hose clip for this, but I think this looks better. And you can see what it's doing. It's holding the pipe at the correct angle, so that when the chimney extension is fitted into the boiler, the safety valve cover that I made in a previous episode fits over the safety valve. And once again, I fit the superstructure to make sure there's nothing fouling. It's very important to do this at each stage of the operation. In this clip I'm checking that the condenser can be easily lifted out of the hull without having to take off any of the piping. Here I've fitted the main exhaust pipe from the condenser, and the condenser, complete with its fittings and exhaust pipe, went back into its holder inside the hull without any of the pipes having to be removed. And here I'm fitting the chimney extension which has a hole in it to accommodate the exhaust pipe. In this clip you can also see that when the chimney extension is fitted in the correct position, lower down into the hole in the boiler, the safety valve cover that I made fits perfectly over the safety valve. The exhaust pipe from the condenser is far too long, and as you can see here it's sticking out of the top of the chimney, which is not a good look, so I'm going to shorten it. You may be wondering why the exhaust pipe is so long and why does it need to go right to the top of the chimney. So while I'm cutting it to length using this pipe cutting tool, I will explain. When using a gas fired boiler, the last thing you want is a blast pipe to go up the chimney and draw the fire. This will probably put the flame out. A proper blast pipe arrangement is fine for a coal fired boiler, but it's really not generally necessary for a gas fired boiler. And that's why the pipe needs to be at least halfway up the chimney, and definitely not down inside the exhaust extension. And once again, a quick test fit of the superstructure is a good idea. Originally this boat had some plastic windows fitted in the top part, but they fell out, so I'm going to leave them out because it's going to be good for ventilation, and it will provide plenty of air for the gas burner. So the boiler's in place and the condenser's in place, can I fit the engine? It's a real tight squeeze, and there is a problem. When I originally loosely fitted the parts into the hull, the chimney extension was fitted much higher. And as you can clearly see from this clip, the chimney extension is getting in the way of the displacement lubricator. But it was a quick fix. All I had to do was unscrew the T-piece complete with the lubricator from the regulator. I made up one piece of pipe which is 3 16 of an inch in diameter to go from the steam tap to the T-piece. 
and then another piece of pipe which is 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter to go between the T-piece and the regulator, which is threaded quarter by 40 threads per inch. The next job is to pipe the exhaust, so I made this. Here it is, very nicely silver soldered, and then I realised it was the wrong size pipe. I forgot that the exhaust pipe needs to be quarter of an inch in diameter to fit the 3 8 by 32 threads per inch unions fitted to the condenser and the engine. We all make mistakes, said the Dalek, climbing off the dustbin. Here's the front hatch, and underneath that is the water tank with the gas tank sat in it, and the gas burner which is loosely attached to the tank. Quite a few viewers, the more meticulous type of viewer, have pointed out that as the liquid gas in the tank evaporates, the gas tank will float on top of the water in the tank. And for those viewers who took the trouble to write in and tell me about this, yes, I am fully aware of the situation. And oddly enough, I already know what I'm going to do about that. Before I start doing these jobs, I sometimes sit down and think about it. I don't just rush into it for the purposes of the video. To round off this video, here's a really nice shot of Edith sat on the bench. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.